Becky, and maybe she can tell us just a little bit about what's going on. We're having our antiques appraisal fair today, and here in the Warren Community Center. Um, all the donations go to the Warren Historical and Genealogical Society. We have our antique appraisers here. They're volunteering their time for the Historical Society for us. We appreciate their help. Okay, I'm not finding a marsh in here, so my thought on this is it's probably a regional artist. Okay. Um, you can tell by looking at the back, there, there's not a lot of age to this. Okay. So this was probably a piece that, uh, you know, could have been done by a regionalist guy. So when you get a, a, a regionalist piece of art, and this guy obviously looks like he liked to paint clown, you look for a few things like, uh, you know, the type of detail. Mm -hmm. Um, the style of the work. Um, this one, it, it looks a little almost amateurish. It, it, it doesn't, you know, the face doesn't lend itself really. You know, if they're trying to make it look like he's kind of made up, uh -huh. it, it's a real rough looking makeup job on him. I would think on a painting like this, the, the value would be subjective. So the, the frame itself, is probably thirty or forty dollars if you were to go and try and buy a frame like this. You're looking at thirty to forty dollars, and I would think the uh, the canvas here with the clown image to a person that collects circus memorabilia or clowns it would probably be worth around a hundred dollars total. But uh, I think it's either a regionalist or an amateur painting. They actually had it. Uh, <laughs> they had it hanging upside down on the wall because these are the feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh okay. But um, you see a lot of these, and these were almost done uh, on an assembly line style. You know, these would, you know, somebody would do this, and somebody would do the flowers. And, you know, then they would do the laminating and put it on there. And here again, this is something that is mass produced. But the fact that it's hand painted helps, and the condition on it uh, looks to be about average. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not in perfect condition, but there's not a bunch of separation to it. Okay. So here again, you're looking at something that's probably in the fifty to hundred dollar range. We had some some uh, stuff we you know had appraised before, but then what we want to know what the value is. What types of uh, stuff? Let's see. We have a painting, we have some dictionaries, and we got some uh, dictionaries about three volumes. Three volumes, and I know about 300 years old or something like that. They were worth yeah. around the seven, yeah. 700. Yeah. If they're, yeah, if they're still retaining value, we just want to, they're just sitting around, so we'll, well get rid of them. Um, a, a jumping off point is uh, if you go to Abe, A B E, uh -huh. abebooks.com, uh -huh. sometimes it's a free site. You can put the books in there, and you can probably get a current value. Oh, okay. Yeah. It might save you some time. He dates to the 1920s, 1930s, right in there. He's, he's made of what they call slush cast metal. Which I thought it was bronze because they had like a shine to it. Nope. I didn't know. I just was guessing. No, I can look in there and I can see the silver and such. And oh, this, really? is, this is what they call slush cast. It's what a lot of the early... Uh, the banks from the 50s and 60s were made of a lot of the figurines and that. But uh, that said, there are people that specifically collect, you know, banks such as this. And this is just a little bit of broken solder. Yeah, I know. It was like that when I, when I got it from my aunt. So he would certainly work. But yeah, 19, uh, right around 1930s, right in there. It's slush cast metal. And something like this, uh, is, it is American. It is? Yeah. Oh, so well, see, my aunt, aunt, she passed away in the middle of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And I do recall as a child, she went to Europe, to yeah. Poland. So I thought maybe she might have gotten it from that. Well, they, they do make these, they were making these in America also, because okay. I've also seen uh, this same figure on the planet. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? Um, this one, in the condition he's in, is yeah. probably around 35 to $40. Okay. If he was intact, he'd probably be closer at in the $50 to $100 range. Okay, and she sat on here? Yeah. 
and we twisted her and she so, mm -hmm. At least I think so. Yeah. What this is is this is a uh, this sits on your dresser. Yeah. And it would hold pins, rings, uh, you know, bobby pins, things like that. And she's made in Japan. Oh yeah. So um, the real good figures like this were made in Germany. Japan started copying this stuff, you know, fifties, sixties, right around there. But um, even so, you know, just the, just the way she sits, she's probably worth about thirty to fifty dollars. Really? Yeah. A lot of these uh, were, were simply made for the tourist trade. Um, this one itself. at about 14 inches. He's obviously a hunter. He's holding a quiver of arrows in his hand. He's got his spear here. Um, definitely African. I, I think it's teak or ebony. Ebony, I'm sorry. I believe it's ebony. Uh, these types of items, they, they were pretty much made for the tourist trade because obviously, uh, you know, if you were a hunter, you didn't need a statue yourself and they didn't have <laughs> tournaments. So this, this was something that was made for the tourist trade. I, the age on it, I would put, would, would be uh, 20th century, meaning 1900s. So my guess on this is more than likely it's probably from 1950, right in that era. 1950s? Yeah. Right in that era. But uh, value-wise on these, that there, there are people that specifically collect African art. And something like this, even though it was made for the tourist trip, it's starting to get some age to it. So it's over 50 years old. So uh, you're probably somewhere in the 75 to 100 dollars range on this as a retail price. So, so $50 for a Victorian, you know, mold blown. You know, tea pitcher. But yeah, this is a flaw, so that would have been classified as a second. Okay. But it's thin, be careful with it. Yeah, be careful with it. Where did you get this? Well, it was given to my grandmother okay. by a young man who came Came a carton? Pardon? Came courting? No. He came from the Netherlands and okay. didn't have any money and she offered him a place to stay. Okay. And that was his payment? rental payment. Okay. Yeah. I wonder how much she was actually charging him for rent. My grandmother was a lady. <laughs> okay. Just curious. <laughs> All right. Well, this is definitely European. It's not American. Okay. okay. We classify this as Victorian art glass, art glass versus pressed glass, which would have been everyday glass. So pressed glass is everyday glass. Hand blown art glass is stuff that's just for cabinets. Yes. It's di you know, designed to sit on the dining table. Put some beautiful flowers in it or feathers. Something just really just designed to look pretty. That's all it is. Uh, this has got a two, actually almost a three color. Clear is classified as a color. You get the blue, bluish green, going to the cranberry. Cranberry shading out to clear. So it's really three colors in this, which is pretty interesting because it's difficult to get a transition between a green to a cranberry. That's a strange combination right there. I only see that in European glass. So it's probably Austrian. It could be, it is possible that it is French because it does have French designs. But the Austrians were using French patterns many times when they did a lot of their glass blowing. And the company that I'm thinking about specifically is Moser, M-O-S-E-R, Moser. And that was a uh, German company that produced enameled glassware. They were really most famous for doing all of this decoration. Okay. They did produce their own glass also, but they also decorated for other glass companies because they were kind of the best at doing all this frilly enamel work that's on the front. And when I see this kind of patterning right here, especially this crosshatch, that's very French. That's Louis the Fifteenth. So they were influenced by a French designer or French designs when they decided to pick a design to put on here. All right, and these are actually fired and attached right to it. These are little glass jewels. They're little flowers, we call them jewels. And they're actually attached. I mean, they're attached when the glass is hot. Yeah, they're not glued on. They're actually when they made it, okay? 
Uh, it's good quality. I don't see any markings on the bottom. It does have what's called a polished panel, and that is this. You can feel it's real smooth right here. It's like a little ring. Mm -hmm. When they blew this, okay, they first had and created a tube, and then they had to separate it and break it, and then flip it over and attach to this end in order to finish this side. Because this side would go back in the furnace, and then eventually, once they got the edges nice and smooth, then they did this twisting where they flipped and made it in and out, in and out, in and out, in order to finish it. Then once they broke this off into the annealing kiln, it has to cool down over a 24-hour period, then they went back and polished it down because it had a real rough spot, like broken, it looked broken. And they grind that down, it's called a polished pontal. The pontal is a rod, it's called a pontal rod, which they put a little tiny piece of glass on, stick to the bottom, just to hold it to go into the furnace, okay? So you got a good looking piece. Uh, again, the combination of colors is pretty unusual. Uh, but I don't see really any damage. You got a little bit of wear. The gold banding you can see is just about worn off the bottom. See the two bands? There's two gold bands that are on there. Yeah, they're almost gone, aren't they? See, when you go around the other side, they're almost gone. And a lot of this was gilded. Now what they did was they laid uh, yellow enamel work on it, and then they put the gold over it. And because it's worn off, you're now really just seeing the yellow. Okay, it's kind of a darkish yellow. They tried to make it look like gold because they knew that the gold would get worn off over time. Yeah, this was all gilded underneath here. You can see it's just about gone, okay? So we've got some wear issues, but it has, but doesn't have damage. And, as, and I expect to see wear on something that's 100 years old. This is 100 years old. Probably dates from about 1900 to about 1910, about in that time period. Um, it's interesting, and uh, you know, last night I had an auction and I was selling a lot of cranberry art glass. I had pieces similar, not the same, and they were bringing 100 to 150 dollars. So I think this one falls in that same range. I think it's worth 100 to 150. Okay.